no particular deadline. Oh, um, cool. So, well, I mean, in rhythm, before it was four o'clock. Now until we, we get hungry. Now we can, I, I think we could probably take it until five, I would say. Cool. If you want to. Uh, long story, okay. maybe a short story, I don't know. Can talk. Okay, cool. Uh, so, hey, um, this is the last official talk of Arctic JS, right? Yep. But then we're going to do some other stuff after. Um, you can just announce the, you're going to do some um, lightning talks afterwards. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we're going to do some lightning talks after this, but this is the last, like, scheduled talk. Um, and I'm going to talk about the impending mesh web, um, which I'll explain what that means sometime. Uh, so first, a little bit about me. Um, my name, I go by Why Are You Sleeping on the Internet? Uh, I generally prefer that <coughs> name, but you can also call me Jeremy. Um, I'm a Go programmer. I work on IPFS. I like coffee. And recently, I am a member of the Polar Bear Club, which pretty much implies that we all went swimming in the ocean out there, which is like freezing, and it was awesome. <laughs> and yeah, so that's like the crowning accomplishment of the week was not dying. So yeah, let's talk about internet connectivity. It's really, really hard. Um, I've been traveling for about a month now, since uh, just after Christmas, and finding good Wi-Fi has been the hardest thing the entire trip, finding a solid internet connection and a place you know, to be able to sit down and actually connect and do some work, it's been like the biggest challenge. Um, we've found out Git clone, you know, there's a lot of data there and it kills things. Also NPM install um, actually did kill our internet um, last night or the night before, brought it down, ended our video call and yeah, so internet connectivity is pretty hard. Uh, so what is internet? Well, that's kind of a, a strange question, but most of the time we define like having internet as having a connection to the backbone. And why is that so important? Well, because right now all the content we want to go get is, well, right connected to the backbone and not over here. And it makes me wonder like whatever happened to, you know, edge caching, whatever happened to like having the content close to you or the original design being, you know, I can just access any old web server directly. You know, it feels like I have to have a connection all the way up to the backbone and to go back down to get things that I want. I feel like there could be better models uh, for that. So, you know, we have all these files that we want and we want to be able to get them from, well, in my opinion, anywhere. And so we have some tools to help us with this. We can use to make sure that the file we get is the file we want we can you know, use checksums and hashing to make sure that the file is correct. So I can get, it, get the file from anybody, and as long as I know how to check it, I can make sure it's the right file. Um, lots of tools already use these concepts, like NPM does checksums, Git is in Merkle tree, um, Pacman, AppGit, and friends, they all use hashing to make sure that the files they download are the files that they're looking for. And well, the system's already built that way. So, 90, 95%, yeah, just made that number up, of the content you download is probably much, much closer than you think. For example, if I download Chrome and install Chrome on my laptop, um, why did I have to download that from Google when everybody in this room already has it on their laptop? Um, you know, if I NPM install a module, uh, why did that have to come from California when it could have come from Ferros's laptop because he just wrote it? Um, so, like, why, why do we have to, to get this data? Why does it have to go all the way out and all the way back? Why can't it be closer? So I really want to push the idea of having an offline web. And that's like, we can do things on the internet. You can use your computer and use your web browser without having any sort of backbone connection. You know, it might be nice to have the backbone connection, but if that's gone, if all you have is, you know, a Wi-Fi network or some network around town, I still want to be able to do things. So. How can we make that useful? Like, if all I can do is access the local network of Svalbard, how, is that, how can that be useful to me? So we need to take some things into account when we're building the web. So we want to make things static and discoverable. So, and we also want to look at things like MDNS for discovery. And then 
kind of also take a look at the idea of mesh networks. So what I mean by static is static pages are ones that don't rely on you know, content that's changing. So you don't have to make a request to the server to figure out, oh, do I have the right page or do I need to load different content? Um, and static pages make a lot of things really easy, especially distribution. If the page isn't gonna change every time I request it from the server, then I don't need to request it from the server. I can just request it from somebody who already has it. Um, we should also take care to move any logic that can be done client side to the client in JavaScript. There's a lot of web services out there that like, I've gone to some web page and it's like a calculator for something or you know some little neat little web app and for some reason it makes requests to a server to do math or to do something and I, it just blows my mind that that is, has to be so complicated as far as like making requests across the network when that just write it in JavaScript in your browser and get over with it and that can be a static page at that point. Um, so yeah, a lot of web apps that I've seen today are just unnecessarily complexly, you know, all over the place. And um, there was a really, really great talk I went to given by uh, Henrik Jorteg from And Yet at the time. And he basically just preached that this, you know, make web pages local, you know, do single page apps where, you know, the, your web page is all on one page and like do, make, make fewer requests do less talking to the server and just push in that direction. And I think that will help a lot towards the goals that I have. The next part is discovery. Okay, cool, now we have all these nice web apps that run offline. Well, how do we find them? If I'm just sitting here in Svalbard and there is no internet you know, connection to the backbone, I can't really Google things. So how do I find things? Um, so if you're on a LAN network, you have multicast, which has been talked about a few times already at this conference. Awesome. Let's you easily find things. You can advertise services. You can do all sorts of stuff. And I think it's like a super useful tool, except it only works on like LANs. Most ISPs block it. You know, you're not going to get a multicast across the entire internet for, well, security reasons. Um, <laughs> yeah. So other, we need to look at other methods of discovery. So you know, looking at things like Zookeeper and Doozer and etcd, they're really cool and they're really great, but they're still kind of centralized services. And I think there was another talk that talked about this type of problem, this discovery issue. Was it that your talk, Matthias? Yeah? Or no? I about it. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so like finding ways of discovering things without having to search for them. Just having, you know, kind of like a push notification for, hey, what's around me? Um, and I just, I really think that the UX of having like LAN multicast automatically announce, hey look, there's this service here, or, hey look, there's this thing here, and use that for announcing local web pages that are around you. So I can just say, okay, I'm at a coffee shop, get on the Wi-Fi, oh look, somebody here has a web page for their expedition trips to some ice cave, or here's a page about the hot springs north of uh, Longyearbyen. You know, and just things that are immediately interesting to me should be really easy for me to find. Yeah. Um, I just want to say also that multicast, especially multicast DNS, is double cool because we already use DNS in the browser. Right. Front tag servers, so it's kind of transparent. And yeah. It will just find local things first. Yeah, and so Matthias is saying that uh, multicast DNS is like double cool because we already use it in the browser and it's just automatically seamless and transparent for you know using that to find to, you know to access web pages. Seems like a really easy way to like the browsers would just use the new tab page to show local right? sites that are available. When that would be beautiful. Instances. Yeah, so Ferros is saying that it'd be really awesome if we had a new tab page show these local web browser, you know, web pages. I can give a talk about how to do that afterwards. That would be amazing. You that'll should do my, that. That would be my lightning talk. Okay, that will be your lightning talk. We'll have a lightning talk about this later. <laughs> so yeah. So the other thing I'm thinking is, well, multicast DNS is awesome but most ISPs block multicast. Well, what if we had like some local mesh networks, you know, that's, let's say a town will have a single mesh network. So it's technically all the same LAN and they had allowed some, you know, maybe limited form of, and you know, multicast across the network so that everybody in the town could easily discover other things that are happening in that town. Or maybe it doesn't even have to be like the full town. It could be smaller communities. Um, I think, 
I don't know if this is like implemented anywhere, but I think this would be a really cool like experiment to see building an internet community where there's some sense of closeness where the current internet now, I'm talking to some random stranger on the internet, I have no idea if he's, you know, close to me or far away from me, but you know, if we had this idea of a local web, um, the, there'd be a lot cooler communities, I think. I don't know, but I think. So yeah, that would make the internet better for everybody. And well, um, that's my talk. Woo. Any questions? Cool. Thanks. Yeah.